Okay. An entrepreneur can be of uh, any uh, gender, female or male. They can be of any uh, age group as well, uh, any ethnic group, uh, any uh, any nationality. They usually come up with a business idea, a creative business idea, or they spot an opportunity in the marketplace and they decide to start up their business in order to uh, work on this uh, creative business idea. So they are willing to face all the risks that are associated with starting up this business by assembling the necessary resources, financial, capital, and the human resources in order to start up their venture. What's the aim of entrepreneurs? They usually aim at generating growth and profit. Okay. Nowadays, because of downsizing, because of the uh, different uh, difficult economic situations that the whole world is passing through, and also because of the coronavirus pandemic, many companies are downsizing. Many companies are laying off their employees in order to survive during these tough times. So many uh, laid off employees, these cast offs, many laid off employees are left with so many productive years before they reach retirement and they have a solid uh, business uh, management background, they have a solid uh, uh, experience and they are only left with two choices. They either have the choice of to get re-employed, to find another company to employ them, or they have to start up their own business and become entrepreneurs. What are the different characteristics of entrepreneurs? First of all, they desire for responsibility. Why do they desire uh, this kind of responsibility? They should take responsibility for everything related to their business. They will be uh, creating a new business idea. They will uh, be establishing their business. Uh, they need to deal with the customers' complaints. They need to deal uh, with uh, different uh, employees' uh, uh, demands. They need to deal with the government agencies. So will, they will be taking care or they will be responsible for everything in the company. If a person does not have this kind of desire for responsibility, he cannot be an entrepreneur. Those who desire a minimum or a, a, a few uh, level of responsibility, they should not be entrepreneurs because being an entrepreneur comes with a, with a huge package of responsibilities. Another characteristic uh, of entrepreneur is uh, risk eliminators. Uh, they usually uh, try to eliminate risk. How do they eliminate risk? It's true that they are willing to face uh, risk in order to establish their business and make it successful, but at the same time, they try to eliminate uh, the risks, risks associated with this business in order to reach a success. They are uh, self-reliant. Uh, kindly mute your microphone. They are self-reliant. Uh, usually, they don't like uh, to rely on somebody else, on the organization. They prefer to rely on themselves. Uh, they like to take responsibility, to be responsible for everything in the organization. They don't like to depend on anybody in the organization or outside the organization. Another characteristic is the confidence in their ability to succeed. Usually entrepreneurs, they have high confidence in their ability to succeed and without such a confidence, uh, they cannot really be successful because if you don't trust yourself, if you don't trust your abilities as an entrepreneur, uh, excuse me, kindly mute your microphone. Excuse me. Yes. Yes. Okay, sorry for this disruption. Okay, so we were talking about uh, their confidence and their ability to succeed. Without proper confidence, without, without high levels of confidence, uh, entrepreneurs were not able to be successful because before uh, the customers, before the employees will trust you, you need to trust your abilities. You need to know that you are capable of implementing this business, you are capable of running your organization, you are capable of uh, reaching success. 
So this high level of confidence is very important for any entrepreneur. entrepreneur. Uh, also, uh, entrepreneurs, they have determination. What do I mean by determination? They don't give up easily. We all know that during a startup, when we are trying to establish our business, we will be facing so many difficulties. We will be facing so many risks. We will be facing so many problems. We should not give up easily, okay? If we go, give up easily, uh, the idea will end, uh, the entrepreneurship will end. We need to have this kind of determination. We need to be, to be persistent. We should not give up we should not stop we should continue we should learn from our mistakes and we should consider these mistakes as a way of learning okay we should not avoid uh, knowing about these mistakes another characteristic is desire for immediate feedback why do they desire this kind of feedback first of all as we all know uh, it's very important for any business to get immediate feedback especially from its customers OK, why do, the, do we need uh, feedback from our customers? We usually need this, this feedback in order uh, to uh, make any modifications, in order to uh, know if the customers, they really like our products or services. Do we have to modify the quality? Do we have to mo modify the services? Do we have to modify the pricing strategies? Do we have to mo modify uh, the marketing campaigns we are uh, doing? OK, so we need to have this immediate feedback, this immediate feedback. We can get it from our customers, we can get it from our employees, we can get it from our friends, from the government agencies as well. So entrepreneurs usually uh, desire immediate feedback in order to adjust uh, or modify their business to be uh, successful, to be more successful. They also high, high, uh, have high levels of energy. Why do you need high levels of energy as an entrepreneur? Usually entrepreneurs, they need high levels of energy in order uh, to uh, start up their business, in order to organize their company, in order to take responsibility for everything in the organization. They need uh, the, these highs, uh, this uh, high level of business. Sorry, it's my fault. I need uh, to record the session. You're right. OK, so we need to have uh, high levels of energy in order to finish the business, in order to uh, uh, establish the company, in order to organize uh, the, uh, the, or, uh, the, the company in a proper way, in order to meet our uh, customers' needs, in order to satisfy our employees. So we will be putting a lot of work, a lot of energy in our venture in order to reach a success. Also, entrepreneurs, they need uh, skills uh, at organizing. They need to have high organizational skills because uh, they need to take care of everything. If they don't organize their time, if they don't organize their organization properly, they will fail. OK, so they need this kind of high organizational skills to be uh, successful. They also, entrepreneurs usually value achievement over money. Why do they value achievement over money? It's true that entrepreneurs usually establish their business in order to generate money, but it's not the only purpose. They value achievement. They want to uh, succeed. They want to reach, uh, to, to be very well known in their communities, among their uh, societies, in their countries. Okay, they, they need to achieve something in return, something intangible that uh, will uh, bring them uh, this kind of satisfaction. OK, now we will be discussing the different uh, benefits of being an entrepreneur. What are the benefits? First of all, create your own destiny. How can you create your own destiny? By establishing your own business, you're not employed anymore. The effort you put in your business, 
Well, uh, the effort you put in your business, uh, the way you organize your uh, venture, uh, the uh, the creativity of your business idea, uh, the 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 analysis that you did or the study you did in order to make sure that this business idea will be successful, it should bring you or it should lead you at the end to be successful. If your business ends up a successful business, a successful uh, company, you will be generating a lot of profit, a lot of money, and in this way, you will be able to create your own destiny. You can make a difference. How can entrepreneurs make a difference? Usually, entrepreneurs, uh, they can make a difference by uh, when, th when they establish a business, they establish it based on two, uh, usually. Uh, yes, yes, sure. OK, they establish it usu usually on two on, uh, on the basis of two uh, points. They either they either uh, create a new uh, business idea that is not available in the market or they spot an opportunity or a need in the market by uh, by by uh, modifying or by uh, modifying a product or a service that is already available in the market or it's not available in the region. So they are trying to make a difference. They are trying to help their societies. Maybe they are trying to help their environments to be a better place. Uh, maybe they are through trying to provide the customers in this country or in this region with a product or a service that is not available in this country. So for this reason, they are making a difference. They are helping their communities. They are helping their customers. Uh, usually another benefit for entrepreneurship is uh, the impressive profits that are associated with uh, establishing your own business in case your business was successful. As we have mentioned before, if you did your homework well, you have a good business idea, you researched the business idea properly, you, you uh, wrote a good solid business plan, at the end you should be successful and when you're successful, you will be generating a lot of profit. So this is another advantage of being an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs, they usually do what they enjoy most and have fun at. How? Whenever you want to start a business, entrepreneurs, they usually start a business with something they really love. They have passion towards uh, this uh, business. For example, if uh, uh, they love cars, they might start a business in the automotive industry. If they love fashion, uh, they will uh, start a business in the fashion or jewelry industry, for example. OK, so entrepreneurs, they usually start a business in something you love, something uh, something they love, something they have fun doing. OK, so this is another benefit of being entre an entrepreneur because you will be doing, you will be working at something you really love, you, something you have passion towards it. Now we will be discussing the drawbacks. What are the drawbacks of uh, being an entrepreneur? The first disadvantage is uncertainty of income. We don't know how much we will be generating income okay, or revenues because uh, it is a new business, it is a new company, it's the first time maybe uh, we are establishing a business venture and uh, we will be uh, spending some time with uh, zero cash, uh, we will be, uh, before we reach the break even point, we will be uh, investing money, we will be not be generating income and even after we break even, we will be not we will be uncertain about the level of income we will be generating. So this is a disadvantage that is associated with entrepreneurship. This uncertainty of income is a disadvantage. Another disadvantage are, is the risk of losing your entire investment. In case your business went wrong, in case your business was not successful, you will lose your entire investment. In case you, you got a loan from the bank, you have to repay the loan from your own personal money. Maybe you have to sell your property in order to pay the loan. So this is a risk that you will be facing. Uh, another disadvantage uh, is the long hours and hard work, hard work that you will be putting in your business venture. As we all know, in order to establish any kind of business, we need to spend a lot of uh, time, effort in, before we can uh, establish the business. Okay, because it is our business. We are not employed of, with, uh, with any other company. It is our own business. We need to spend long hours working hard in order to establish it. So we need to forget about maybe family gatherings. We will not be able to go out, uh, out uh, with our friends for a while. We will be missing all uh, family and friend occasions in order to start up our business, especially during the startup period. We will forget about our personal life, 
our lives will be dedicated more towards establishing and make, establishing the business and making it more successful. Another disadvantage is the lower quality of life until the business gets established. As we have mentioned before, because we are spending long hours at work and we, putting, we are putting a lot of effort, a lot of energy in our work, our quality of life will be low. We will be missing on everything. We will not be able to go out. We will not be able to go to the gym. We will not be able to uh, attend any uh, gatherings with our families or friends. So our quality of life will be uh, very low. We will be very tired. We will be very exhausted. So this is another disadvantage that any person who is willing to establish or uh, become an entrepreneur, they should uh, be taking these disadvantages into consideration and they should know that they they will be facing definitely they will be facing all of these risks and they should know how to deal with these disadvantages and risks another disadvantage is the high level of stress because the entrepreneurs are usually responsible for everything in the company, especially during the startup period before uh, the company uh, gets established and because before it is really uh, operating well, they need they will be under a lot of stress because uh, they need to make sure that uh, their customers are satisfied. They need to make sure uh, that uh, the employees are working properly. They are not facing any problems. They don't have any issues with the government agencies so all of these uh, problems will create a high level of stress for any entrepreneur okay here we can see uh, uh, very famous entrepreneurs who started up of, uh, their own business ideas. They founded their own business ideas and they were very successful in their business like uh, Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft. We all know Mr. Bill Gates. His net worth as of uh, January 2021 is $122.4 billion. We have also Elon Musk, the founder of Tesla Cars. His net worth is $190 billion dollars. Uh, Mr. Mark Zuckerberg, uh, founder of Facebook, his net worth is also a 90 billion dollars. And we also have uh, the late Steve Jobs, uh, the founder of Apple. His net worth as of September 2011 when he died was seven billion dollars. So as you can see, all of these entrepreneurs, they started their own business from scratch. Uh, they were uh, willing to take the risks. They put a lot of hard work. They put a lot of energy. Uh, they took a lot of responsibilities in order to reach success and in order to reach uh, profit uh, for their for uh, to gain profit for their companies and uh, for uh, themselves as well. OK, now we will start by how to become an entrepreneur. There are several steps that should be followed in order for any person to become an entrepreneur. First of all, you need to decide on your business idea. As we have mentioned earlier, there are different ways to study your business idea. Your business idea should be creative, innovative. You can be starting a, a new uh, business idea from scratch that is not available in the market, that is not available maybe in the whole world. It is a product or a service, an innovative product or a service that is not available anywhere. Or you can working on a creative also business idea by upgrading an existing product or service in order to meet the customer's needs and demands. So this is regarding the business idea. The first step is to establish or to uh, come up with a creative, innovative business idea. Then it's not enough to have the best idea in the world, even if it is a creative one. We need to study the idea. OK, there are so many different ways to study the idea. We can uh, do a feasibility study. We uh, can do uh, we can apply the Porter's five forces model in order to study our idea. Uh, uh, we can also uh, do a pastel analysis. We, uh, we have actually we have to do all of these kinds, all of these analysis in order to study the idea. I will be discussing uh, these uh, analysis later on uh, in the next uh, part of this uh, lecture. So after studying the idea using different uh, analysis, using different models, if the idea 
turned out to be feasible after conducting a feasibility study. If it is doable, if it is promising, I move to the next step, which is preparing the business model. OK, at this stage, I need to prepare a, a solid business model in order to know what are the factors, the different components of my uh, business idea. Who are my shareholders? Who are my suppliers? Who are my customer? Uh, wh uh, which customer segment I will be serving? Uh, with which suppliers I will be dealing? How am I gonna choose my suppliers? What is um, uh, what are the products or services I will be delivering to the customers? What is my revenue stream? Okay, I have to study so many things related to the business model in order to make sure that I have a solid business model that will be successful. Because as we have mentioned before if I don't study my business idea well uh, I will end up failing so the, the, stu uh, stu the, the second step and the third step are really important uh, in order uh, to uh, reach success then if the business model turns out to be a good business model I start uh, writing a solid business plan OK, there are so many components that should be also included in the business plan. This business plan can be uh, submitted to different entities, uh, it, uh, investors, uh, bankers, uh, any any entity who is interested in uh, investing in my uh, business idea. So for this reason, I need to write a solid business plan. Then after I write my business plan, I need to assemble the resources. Here, what kind of resources I need to assemble? There are so many resources that should be assembled at this stage. OK, I need to assemble for financial resources. I need to know from where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the capital. Is it uh, something, uh, uh, is it from my own personal money? Uh, will I be uh, able to get a loan from the bank? Uh, do I need uh, some external investors to help me in establishing my business? OK, there are so many ways to assemble the financial resources. I also need to assemble the human resources. What do I mean by assembling human resources? I need to employ highly qualified, creative people that uh, with good experience, definitely, that will be able uh, to hold the proper uh, their positions properly in the organization and help me uh, to be more successful, help me, help me to serve my customers in a better way and to have uh, satisfied uh, customers that are not complaining uh, from anything regarding my uh, products or services. Then, after uh, establishing uh, or after completing uh, this process, I can start up my business. So let's start by the business idea. Okay, creativity and innovation. Whenever we're talking about uh, coming up with a creative business idea, I need to distinguish between to distinguish between two concepts, which are creativity and innovation. What is the difference between creativity and innovation? Creativity is the ability to develop new ideas and to discover new ways of looking at problems and opportunities, which is thinking new things. While innovation, it's the ability to, uh, to apply creative solutions to problems or opportunities to enhance or to enrich people's lives, uh, doing, which is doing new things. So to conclude, creativity is thinking new things, while innovation is doing new things. It's implementing new things. OK, we all come up with creative ideas. All of us can come up with any creative idea, but not all of us will be innovative. Innovative, it is when we implement our creative ideas. Only entrepreneurs do. Entrepreneurs, they need to be both creative and innovative. If they are only creative, they cannot. it means that they are not establishing a business based on their creative idea. So entrepreneurs are usually creative and innovative at the same time which uh, will uh, help them in uh, establishing a good uh, business, a solid uh, business. What are the barriers of creativity? Whenever we are talking about creativity, some people will say, I'm not creative, I don't know how to be creative. It's, this is not true, OK? First of all, searching for the one right answer is one of the barriers, one of the main barriers to creativity. We have been taught since we were in KG classes at school that there is only one right answer for uh, any question, which is not always true, which is not always the case. There might be so many answers, right answers. They, there might be so many solutions 
answers to any problem. So whenever I stop thinking that there is only one right answer for any problem, it means I, I started to be creative. This is the first barrier. The second one, fo focusing on being logical. I should not always focus on being logical. Sometimes if I am illogical, if I'm not following the logic in thinking, I will come up with a creative idea that I can implement in my organization. So being logical is it's not it is a barrier to creativity. I should not I should not always be logical. I'm not saying that you should always not be logical. But at some points when you are trying to come up with creative ideas, you should uh, you should train your brain to stop being logical because at this point you need to be illogical to come up with a certain creative ideas. But uh, but in your daily life you have to be logical, OK? Another barrier is blindly following the rules also. Rules and regulations in a, in a company, in a family rules, culture, soci social rules, they are all uh, put in order to be logical, in order to avoid any pro problems. But sometimes if we stop following certain rules, we might able we might be able to come up with creative ideas also i'm not all i'm not telling you to stop obeying the rules no we have to obey the rules okay especially uh, the social rules the cultural rules but at times when we are trying to be creative we need uh, for a while to stop thinking logical to stop thinking uh, by uh, uh, by how to obey the rules no i don't want to obey the rules at this time i don't want to be logical i want to uh, follow my intuition i want to try to be uh, creative in order to come up with a creative idea for my business becoming over specialized we all know when people become over specialized in a certain uh, business in a certain industry, they lose their creativity because they are uh, so specialized in uh, their work. They don't even have to think about uh, the work because of their uh, high experience. They know exactly what to do in each uh, situation. So they stop thinking about creative solutions or creative products or services because of this over uh, specialization. So becoming over specialized is another barrier to creativity. Avoiding ambiguity. OK, we all know that during establishing a business or while operating our business, there are uh, so ambiguities that are associated with our business. OK, so there are so many things that are not clear. I need uh, to uh, uh, solve these uh, ambiguities in order to uh, know what to do. So people who avoid these ambiguities, so if you avoid uh, the uncertainties that and the, un, the ambiguities that are associated with, the, uh, with any business, it means that you are putting a barrier to, to creativity because uh, this ambiguous, uh, ambiguous uh, situation will force you to come up with creative ideas. If you avoid uh, these situations, if you, uh, if you avoid these uncertain situations, it means that you are trying to avoid uh, creativity as well and you are blocking your creative thinking. Fearing looking foolish. We all have this kind of fearing, this kind of fear. We all fear to look foolish, OK? So I don't want to come up with, with an idea. Maybe I don't want to tell my manager about a certain idea or my friends or my family because they will laugh at me. They will think that I'm a stupid fool guy. I don't want to look foolish in front of anybody. So I stop being creative. I don't want to think about anything. I will just follow the rules, follow the logic, do my responsibilities, do what's what my managers is asking me to do and I don't want to come up with any creative idea in order uh, not to uh, face this uh, foolishness uh, situations. Fearing mistakes and failures. Another barrier to creativity is some people, they fear to make a mistake, they fear to uh, fail uh, in their business, uh, uh, in their uh, venture, so they stop being creative. We should all know that mistakes and failures should be considered a way to learn uh, and to uh, to uh, to advance. Whenever I make a mistake, whenever I fail in anything, I should learn from my mistake. I should learn from my failures in order to be more successful and in order to avoid such mistakes and failures in the future. OK, so fearing mistakes and failures. If you fear these mistakes, you will definitely not be creative. 
another barrier is a feel, a believing that I am not creative. People who always uh, say that they are not creative, they will end up not creative. You should, uh, on the other hand, say I am creative. I can come up with uh, creative ideas. I have the same capabilities like any other entrepreneur, like any other successful entrepreneur. Nobody is better than me. Nobody can uh, come up with creative ideas better than me. So. Uh, uh, you you should never say that you are not creative. Okay, uh, one uh, one person is asking that if I started my business without obeying the rules, then the business will uh, get a lot of violations. I'm not saying that you should start your business uh, uh, and and uh, not obey the rules. No. You should obey the regulatory rules, the policies, and the regulations that are put by the government. But sometimes when you are thinking about being a creative, you should stop thinking about policies. You should stop thinking about being logical. When you are thinking uh, in your room, uh, when you are trying to focus, when you are come, trying to come up with a business idea, when you are trying to come up with a solution for a certain problem, you should not always think about uh, the policies and rules and regulations. Try to forget about them. Try to be creative in your thinking. You will end up having a creative solution or a creative business idea that will fit into the rules and regulations, that will fit into uh, the concepts of uh, the culture, the society, the, con the country. Don't worry about that. But while you are thinking, don't think first about the rules and regulations. Don't think about logic. No, just Focus on creativity. Say that I want to be creative now. I don't want to think about anything else. Anything else I can uh, solve later on. Okay. Whenever I come up with a with a business idea, I will make sure that this business idea will uh, be uh, under the rules and regulations of the country, of the society, of the family. I will not be obeying. Uh, I will not be uh, violating any rule. Okay. OK, how can you enhance uh, your creativity? How can you promote your creativity? First of all, you need to allow yourself to be creative. As we have just mentioned, stop thinking uh, when you are trying to be creative. Don't think about the rules. Don't think about logic. Don't think about uh, anything else. Just focus on being creative and never say that I'm, I am not creative. The second way is forget about the rules. OK, as we have just mentioned, travel and observe. We all know when we travel nowadays, uh, unfortunately, we cannot travel because of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. But we, when we can travel, you will observe so many products, so many services that are available in other countries and it's not available in your country. So you can uh, imitate these uh, services or products or you can export these products or services into your country. In this way, you are providing the customers living in your region, in your country with products or services that are not available in your region. So in this way, you are being creative. Observe the products and services of other companies, especially those in completely different markets. OK, we always have to uh, uh, we always have uh, to observe uh, the products and services of other uh, companies. Why? Because uh, from uh, the uh, products or services of our competitors or even from companies uh, from different industries, we can get creative ideas, maybe a product that is used uh, in a completely different market, in a con completely different industry, might be useful in my industry and in my market. So it is a good way to be creative as well. Another way to enhance creativity is to notice what is missing. We all know that in our markets, in our societies, uh, we will always find that is something there is something miss missing, either a product or a service. So whenever I find uh, a, a need an, or an opportunity in the market because something is missing, I can work on establishing an, a company to satisfy this need. OK, because I will be uh, taking care or I will be grabbing this opportunity to satisfy uh, the need uh, of a certain product or service in my market. Look for ways to turn trash into treasure. Sometimes we can turn trash into treasure and we can use 
somebody else a trash and uh, make uh, a product or a service from uh, from these trash we all uh, see from uh, so many parts of the world uh, sometimes use uh, the wheels of trucks or the wheels of uh, cars to turn them into tables to turn them into chairs uh, sometimes they use spoons uh, forks and uh, knives which are old uh, to turn them into lanterns okay well, there are so many uh, ways to turn a trash into treasure whenever we are creative we will be trying to turn trash into treasure because this will be generating also some kind of profit for our company Record your thoughts and ideas. You should always know that we come up with so many creative ideas all the time. If you don't record your ideas on a piece of paper, you will forget about them. You will say, oh, I, I, I had an idea yesterday or the day before, but I, I cannot remember it anymore. OK, I had a very nice idea, but I cannot remember anymore. I cannot remember it anymore. So it's very important to always record your thoughts and ideas on a piece of paper because you might come back to these ideas later on, maybe in one month, maybe in one year. You never know. Maybe the idea that is not feasible now, it will be a good idea in one or two years. So you need to always record your ideas on a piece of paper. Listen to other people. Why do I need to listen to other people and I need to listen to customers? Because from my customers and even from uh, people who are not my customers, I can get feedback regarding my, regarding my company, pro, company's products or services. I can uh, spot a need. Uh, in the market, maybe uh, some uh, people will tell me that uh, they are trying to find a product or a service in the country, but they searched the whole country and it's not available. OK, in this way, I will uh, spot a need in the market and I might work on establishing a business and uh, uh, and uh, delivering this product or uh, service to the to the customers or to the people in this country. So it's very important to listen to customers, to get the, uh, feedback and to get ideas, uh, creative ideas from them as well. Get adequate sleep. It's very important to have uh, get uh, to get uh, adequate sleep because if we are exhausted, if we are tired, we will be unable to be creative. We will not have enough energy to uh, be creative and to come up with uh, new uh, business uh, ideas. Okay. Now we will start by the feasibility analysis. After coming up with the creative business ideas, as we have mentioned earlier, it's not enough to have only a creative business idea. We need to study this idea in order to make sure that our uh, idea, it is feasible, it is doable. OK, so why do we need to do this feasibility analysis? It is a, partic is a particular idea, a viable foundation for creating a successful business. I need to study my idea. Is it a good idea to, to start up a business for this idea? The feasibility study addresses the questions. Uh, the question, should we proceed with this business idea or not? So if I do a business idea and and uh, it, uh, uh, sorry, if I do a feasibility study and according to the feasibility study, my uh, business idea is a good business idea, then I go forward and establish a business based or uh, go to the next step of, uh, of uh, writing a business plan according to the feasibility study. If my feasibility study or according to my feasibility study, my business is not a good business idea, I stand. I stop. I stop here, and I start to uh, the rethinking process. I start to uh, think about another creative idea, and it will also pa go through the same path. path uh, after uh, having a creative idea, I need to start uh, the analysis, the feasibility analysis. So what's the what's what are the elements of the feasibility analysis? First of all, we need to uh, have product or service feasibility, industry or market feasibility, financial feasibility, and entrepreneurial feasibility. Let's start with the product or service feasibility analysis. According to the product or service feasibility, it determines the degree to which a product or service idea appeals to potential customers and identifies the resources necessary uh, to produce it. So it's very important to know if what are the necessary resources uh, for, uh, for me to assemble in order to produce this product or uh, the service. 
okay and i need to know also if my uh, business idea uh, which is which is the product or service does it appeal to potential customers are they willing to buy my products or services so the product or service feasibility analysis it usually asks two questions are customers willing to purchase our products or services if yes okay i move on can we provide the product or service to customers at a profit? So it's very important to make sure that my customers are willing to buy my products or services, and I will be able to produce these products or services at a profit. Otherwise, I will be losing money. Okay. Then I need to move to the financial feasibility analysis. Um, According to the financial feasibility analysis, it will be discussing or it I will be analyzing the capital requirements, an estimate of how much startup capital is required to launch the business. I need to know how much money do I need in order to start up my business, okay? So at uh, in the fi financial feasibility analysis, I will be uh, stating the capital requirements. I will also have uh, to uh, know the estimated earnings, forecasted income statements. Uh, I will be generating some uh, projected uh, financial statements in order how much money I will uh, forecast it definitely how much money I could be making if I start up my business I will have uh, to mention that all that my expenses all uh, the ways I will be generating revenues in order to come up with estimated earnings I will also have to uh, know the time out of cash in the financial feasibility analysis why the total cash it will take to sustain the business until the business achieves a break even cash flow we all know that when we are starting our business it will not be generating any kind of profits or revenues so we will be uh, uh, we will be uh, under pressure under financial pressure for some time we will not have uh, the business will not be generating any kind of cash so we should have other ways of income in order to survive otherwise we cannot survive without uh, cash or without other kind of income before the the company or our company reaches the break even point and it starts generating some uh, profits so uh, the time out of cash should be also mentioned in the feasibility financial feasibility analysis we have also the return on investment investment to determine how much investors can expect their investment to return we all know as we have mentioned earlier that when whenever we are establishing our business we might uh uh, invite uh, some investors to invest in our business because we might not have enough money to establish uh, such a business or we might be uh, might have to take a loan also uh, from uh, the bank in order to to establish our business so the banker or the investor they will both ask us about their return on investment they need to make sure that if they give us the money if they invest the money in our business our our business will be generating enough profits to have high returns on investment. Otherwise, they will not be willing to give us any penny. OK? Then after the financial feasibility analysis, I need to move to the entrepreneurial feasibility. Okay. At this point, I need to study uh, the entrepreneurial's ability. Is this idea right for me? First of all, I need to make sure that the, I love this idea. I like it. I'm convinced about it. Uh, I believe in it. I'm, I did my work uh, by collecting all the necessary data, and I'm willing to uh, uh, take all the risks that are associated with uh, this uh, business venture. So th uh, the first, uh, the first part is this idea right for me? If yes, I continue. I need to assess the entrepreneurial entrepreneurial's uh, readiness. Uh, do I have enough knowledge, enough experience, enough skills necessary to operate my business or not? Maybe I'm operating in a completely different industry, in a completely different market I'm not aware of. Okay, so I need to know how can I uh, avoid these uh, challenges? How can I overcome these uh, challenges, not avoid, overcome these challenges in order uh, to uh, be successful? So I, I should have enough knowledge, enough experience, enough skills to uh, open my business. Assess whether the business will be able to generate enough profit to support everyone's income needs. As we all know, as we have mentioned earlier, the business will not generate a profit uh, when uh, we are starting it up or we are, or before it reaches uh, the break even point so i need to make sure that i have other sources of, of uh, income or i will starve till death 
me and my family. OK, so it's very important uh, to find uh, other ways of income before uh, before uh, my uh, business uh, reaches uh, the break, uh, the break even point. Then after the entrepreneur industry uh, feasibility study, I need uh, to uh, do an industry and market feasibility. Here I need to determine how attractive is the industry for a business. Is it an attractive industry? Is uh, are the competitors in this industry generating enough profits and revenues? OK, uh, do how many uh, how many competitors do I have in this industry? I need to uh, uh, collect all the information related related to the industry and to the market before I decide to uh, go into this business or not. I need also to evaluate possible niche markets. We all know that sometimes some companies they generate so a high, very high profits from niche markets. So I need to know: uh, Do I have to go into a niche market, or it will be a regular market? Okay, so I need to study my market as well. Most opportunities for new businesses within an industry are due to changes taking place in that industry. We all know that uh, the, the, there are so many changes uh, going on nowadays, especially because of coronavirus pandemic. We have so many political economic problems in so many uh, countries around the world. And uh, this is uh, and all of these problems are affecting uh, businesses all over the world. So in the industry and market feasibility, I need to, ch to, to study the macro forces that are affecting uh, uh, competition, that are affecting uh, industries and markets in uh, so many parts of the world. What are these macro forces? If I want to study the macro forces that are associated with any business, I need to do a pastel analysis. What is a pastel analysis? The pastel analysis stands for P, uh, uh, political, E as economic, as social, T technological, E environmental, and uh, the L for legal. The first one, political. I need to make sure uh, that the country I'm operating in, they, are, uh, they don't have any political uh, instabilities, they don't have corruption. I need to study the tax policies, the labor law, the trade restric restrictions in order to have a, a deep idea uh, about all the ru uh, policies, rules and regulations of that country. Because if I don't have all the idea, if I don't have all the information related to uh, the policies in this country, to the political situation in this country, I will definitely be facing so many uh, challenges. In the pastel analysis, I need to study the economic conditions also of the of the country. I need to know uh, about its economic growth. I need to know about its its current exchange rate. Is it fluctuating or not? It, is it stable? I need to to know the inflation rate in this country. I need also to know the interest rates that are provided by uh, financial institutions, uh, unemployment rates that are available in the country. Okay, then I will move to the social factors in the pastel analysis. I need to know. Uh, the population uh, that are available in this country, their age distribution, their gender distribution, their income level, uh, their health uh, consciousness, uh, their lifestyles, uh, their cult uh, the cultural barriers uh, that are associated with this society, uh, their uh, educational and income level, because it will all affect my business. It will all affect how customers will be reacting with my business as well. Then I will move to the T, which is technology. I need to uh, study the technological uh, incentives, level of innovation, automation, the research and development activities that are available in this country, the technological awareness, uh, the technological infrastructure that is available in this country. Maybe I need a fast internet. Maybe I need uh, uh, high tech technologies that are not uh, readily available in this country. So I need to study all the technological uh, uh, factors also that are related to my business and are available in the country that I'm planning to operate in. Then I need to uh, study the environmental factors, the E. I need to know the weather, the climate, the environmental uh, policies, climate change uh, 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 issues, uh, pressures from the NGOs. Uh, are they facing any environmental or uh, 
or uh, environmental or environmental problems in this country what uh, are the levels of uh, maybe corporate social responsibility what are the initiatives that, uh, related to the environment and helping the environment so i need to collect also data related to the environment and the last uh, part the last thing i need to know is uh, to uh, study the legal requirements that are available, uh, the, uh, the legal requirements that are available in the country, the employment through uh, laws and regulations, consumer protection laws, uh, the copyright and patent laws, uh, the health and safety laws as well, so uh, uh, discrimination laws as well. So I need to know all the uh, laws, policies, regulations, that are related uh, uh, to establishing a business in this country. So this is the cell analysis. Cell, as you have seen, we are studying the macro forces, the general forces that can affect any business in uh, this market. Not only my business, it can affect any business operating in this country. Okay. Now I need uh, to move to the specific uh, forces which are Porter's five forces that can affect me directly as a company. I have, uh, according to Porter, we have five forces that we need to study before we decide if we uh, if we start up our business or not. First of all, I need to know who are my suppliers. Uh, how uh, what uh, how many suppliers do I have for this industry? Uh, are they huge suppliers? Are they? Uh, uh, do, uh, do I have a few suppliers? What is the level or the quality of raw material are they providing me? Uh, what services do they provide? So I need to know well my suppliers know everything related to the potential suppliers in the market as well. I need to also know my uh, buyers, which are my customers. Who are my customers? What is uh, what are their ages? What are uh, their level of income, level of education? Uh, are uh, they? Uh, what are their demands? What are their needs? Uh, what do they really uh, want from my product or service? Okay. How many uh, potential buyers do I have in this market? I need also to collect all the information necessary or related to the buyers or potential buyers in this market. Then I have uh, to uh, know who are my competitors. Okay, I need to know who are my direct competitors, uh, their number, what uh, products or services are they uh, delivering to the customers or providing to the customers, uh, what uh, quality level are they uh, providing, what prices, what marketing campaigns are they providing as well, are their customers loyal to them or uh, their customers are uh, unloyal, they can easily switch to my company or any other company. So I need to know also the level of competition in this market. I need also to study the threat of substitute products. We all know that so many uh, products have their own substitute products. For example, if I, uh, if I sell a coffee, uh, a substitute product for my uh, coffee product is the tea. Okay, so I need uh, to know uh, what are my substitute uh, products uh, or substitute companies doing? What are their marketing campaigns? What are their pricing strategies? I need to study also the level of quality or service they are uh, delivering to the customers. All of the, these information are necessary in order uh, to uh, decide if I can start my business or not. And the last thing in the and the last force in Porter's five forces is the threat of new entrants. We all know that if an industry is really act attractive, so many companies will want to go into this market. So I want to know uh, the threat of new entrants. Is it high or low? Some industries, even if they are attractive, but they require a high, a large number of paid up capital, not any company or any entity can afford this high uh, level of paid up capital. So the threat of new entries in this case will be very low. OK, so I need to know who are the possible uh, companies or entities that might enter the market because they find it uh, uh, attractive. So after conducting the feasibility analysis, if after the conducting the feasibility analysis, uh, applying Porter's five forces, uh, I need to, to know if my uh, business uh, idea proved to be a good business idea, I move on to the next step, which is uh, the business modeling process. If my business idea proved to be a bad business idea, it's not an attractive one, I stop 
uh, at this uh, point, I don't waste enough. I don't waste more money. I don't waste more time on studying an idea that is not attractive, not, that is not feasible. OK, so in case the, the business idea was feasible, I need to move to the business modeling process. We have four phases in the business modeling process. What are these phases? Phase one, I need to develop the business model canvas. Phase two, I need to test the value proposition with customers. Phase three, test the product with a prototype. And phase four, uh, pivot business uh, model. So let's move on with phase one. Developing a business model canvas. After conducting a feasibility analysis, and if the feasibility analysis was really a good one, a successful one, I move on to the business model canvas. I need to fill up this, paper, this uh, table to make sure that I know all the information related to my business idea. First of all, I need to know who are my key partners. OK, these key partners can be my suppliers, uh, any company I'm dealing with uh, as an agent, as distributors. OK, uh, they should be put under this uh, section, which are the key partners. Under the key activities, I will be putting my uh, products or services. What are my key activities? What will I deliver to the customers? Exactly, I should define my activities here, my products or services. Then after key activities, I need to uh, define or write my key resources. By resources here, we have three kinds of resources that we should not forget. We have financial resources. I should uh, identify how much money I need to establish my, my business and to operate my business. I need uh, to know how many employees I need to hire in order to start up my business. And I need also to know what are the capital requirements from machinery and equipment that uh, I need to buy in order to start up my business. Then I should move to the value proposition. Under the value proposition, I need uh, to uh, write uh, the, uh, the added value I'm delivering to the customers. Why the customers uh, or uh, why the customers will pro buy my product or service, not my competitors' products or services. What is the added value in my product or service that is not available in my competitors' products or services? OK, so this is uh, this sh uh, be, should be written under the value proposition and then under the customer relationship here i need to uh, write how will i be uh, or what is uh, the relationship with the customer is it a direct relationship or is it an indirect one okay will i be uh, serving the customer uh, for example from my shop or uh, the customers will be buying my products or services online so the relationship with the customers should be mentioned here the kind of relationship under channels we have two kinds of channels channels of communication and channels of distribution. Uh, in the channels of communication, I need to write uh, or uh, to uh, identify how am I going to communicate with my customers? Will I be communicating with uh, my customers directly or by email or by social through social media? OK, I need to define what are the channels of communication or by phone? What are the channels of communication am I using? And in the channels of distribution, also, I need to identify how am I going to distribute my uh, products or services? Is it directly in my shop or uh, through uh, online shopping and uh, through RMX, for example, or DHL? OK, so uh, the channels of communication and distribution should be identified here. Under the customer segments, here I need to uh, identify who are my customers, their gender, their age group, uh, their level of education, their uh, level of income, uh, where are they located, in which cities or in which areas, everything related to my customer should be uh, identified under this section. Then I will move to the cost structure. What are my total cost and my variable cost should be identified or added in this section and the revenues. How, how am I going to uh, generate revenues and what are my revenue streams? from where uh, uh, and how much? How much am I going to generate uh, revenues uh, from uh, this venture? OK, 
the purpose of this business uh, model canvas is to have all the information related to my business in front of me. OK, in this case, I will not me be missing anything related to my business model. OK, the, uh, we, then we will move to phase number two, which is uh, testing the value proposition. I need to ask my customers, do we really understand the customer problem? Uh, do we really understand the customer problem the business model is trying to address? So I need to know if my customers really understand uh, my product, the value of my products or services, and uh, are are these uh, uh, products or services really important to my customers? Or are, are my customers willing to spend uh, their hard earned money on my products or services or not? So I need to know if my customers value my products or services or not. This is in phase number two. In phase number three, I need to uh, have or uh, build a business prototype. Entrepreneurs test their business models on a, on a, on a small uh, scale before committing serious resources to launch a business that might not work. So in order to avoid uh, extra expenses, I need to build up a prototype for my product, which is sometimes called a lean startup. It is a simplified product with maybe less features. It is a simplified product that will be given to real customers to try. If the customers like it, I know that it will be a, a good uh, product. Maybe the customers will give me some uh, comments or some feedback to modify before launching my uh, full uh, version of my product. So I will be make I will make these modifications according to the customer feedback. So the business prototype is very important in order to understand my customers' needs, in order to know if they will like my product or not, if the product is easy to use, uh, is the product uh, really uh, of high uh, quality? Uh, they know how to use it easily. They don't. Uh, they are not facing any technical problems with my uh, product or not. Then I move to the last uh, phase, which is uh, the pivot stage. Pivots. It is the process of making changes and adjustments in the business model based on the feedbacks I received from the customers during the uh, prototype stage. OK, so I have three kinds of pivots, product pivot, customer pivot and revenue model pivot. According to the product pivot, I am changing something in, in the product itself, maybe uh, related to the design, to the quality, to the features, the specifications. It is a pivot or a modification related to the product itself. Maybe after the my customers tried the uh, prototype, I discovered that I need to change my customer segments. I was uh, planning to target uh, maybe uh, people in their uh, 40s uh, with uh, my uh, products. It appears that they did not like it. Uh, I might uh, change my customer segment into uh, people in their 20s, for example. OK, then the last pivot, it is related to the revenue model pivot. Here I am changing the way I'm generating revenues from my products or services according to the feedback from my customers, according to uh, the uh, prototype uh, test. I might find that I might I might be able to generate revenues from another source of the product or by by selling, for example, uh, accessories, extensions to my product. They, I will be able to generate more revenues in this way. OK, so these are the three kinds of pivots I can do in order to um, to uh, modify my product or service accordingly. Then after finishing the business model, if it was a good business model, it's time to, for me to write my business plan. What should be included in the business plan? It's very important not to miss any section in this business plan and also I need to follow uh, the uh, business plan as it is shown uh, in uh, this figure. First of all, I need to have a title page and a table of content because if I don't have a table of content, uh, first of all, before uh, uh, defining what is a business plan, I want to tell you what is the aim of a business plan. Usually this business plan, I use it for me and for I, I submit it to uh, potential investors or to bankers in order to get money. So uh, the, uh, maybe, some, maybe this business plan is uh, 100 pages. 
the, the investor or the banker, uh, he, he might be looking for certain parts of the business plan. It's very important to have a table of content in this business plan in order for the uh, investor to find what he really wants to find easily and quickly. Otherwise, maybe he will throw my business plan in the garbage. So I will start with a title page and a good table of content. Then I will move to the executive summary. The executive summary, it will summarize the whole business plan. Okay, I will uh, this I will define it later on when I finish uh, the last step in the business plan. Uh, then after the executive summary, I need to write a mission statement and a vision statement for my company. Then I need to describe my uh, firm's products or services, a, a, a thorough description. What are my products or services? What's the value uh, proposition in my products or services? Uh, the features, the, the uh, everything related to the product, the quality level, uh, color, design, everything related to the product or service should be should be described at uh, this uh, stage. Okay, and then uh, I need uh, to. Uh, uh, write a business and industry profile here what sh what should i do i need uh, to uh, write everything related to my industry what is my industry uh, describe my industry in which industry am i operating is it a competitive in industry or not are companies in this industry generating enough profits or not uh, how many competitors do i have in uh, this industry then i will move deeply into the competitor analysis who are my competitors what strategies are they using? Uh, what are their marketing strategies? What are what are their pricing strategies? What are uh, their pro products or services? What are what is the added value they are delivering to the customers through their products or services? Then I need to move to the marketing strategy. Here I need uh, to uh, clearly define uh, my marketing stra strategy. How am I willing to market my products or services in order to attract customers' uh, attention, in order to uh, 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 create awareness for my products or services, and in order to convince uh, potential customers to buy my products or services? Then I need to move to the entrepreneurs and managers resumes at this point it's very important to add my resume as an entrepreneur and all the top managers resumes as well in the business plan why do i need my resume and the top business managers resumes because whenever the, uh, the investor or the banker is looking at uh, the business plan they need to make sure that i have enough knowledge enough skills enough experience uh, uh, that will make me uh, able to run this kind of business because if they find that I'm not enough uh, experienced and I, I don't have enough knowledge in this industry, they might not give me the money, they might not be willing to invest in my venture. Then after that, I need to move to the plan of operation. What should I do here? I need uh, to uh, thoroughly discuss and write how am I plan planning to operate my business? Uh, what will be my business structure? Uh, how many employees will I need? Uh, what are their qualifications? Uh, what are uh, the rules and regulations that I should follow in my organization according maybe to the government uh, policies? Okay, so I need to define everything related to the plan of operation. Then I need to write a pro forma or projected financial statements. Since I didn't start operating yet, I don't have a clear idea about my financial statements. OK, they will all be projected, estimated financial statements, but it's very important to have realistic financial numbers. OK, because if the if the in, uh, investor or the banker will sense that I'm manipulating the numbers in order to make my business plan uh, attractive, they will not trust me. They will say that I'm a liar. They will not give me any dollar. OK. And the last step is the loan or investment proposal. I need to tell the investor or bank how much money will I need to start up my business? Why do I need this money? How am I gonna use this money? What is the return on investment? And when will I be uh, returning uh, the money and how much profits they will be generating from, from this investment? Okay, so this is the uh, business plan. 
Now let's move to the second part of the business plan, which is the executive summary. In the executive summary, I need to summarize everything from mission and vision statement till the loan and investment proposal. It is a summary of the whole business plan. Sometimes the investors or the bankers, they start by reading uh, the executive summary. If they find it attractive, they will move on, continue. If they don't like the executive summary, they will stop here and reject my proposal. So it's very important to write a proper executive summary that is attractive, that is realistic, in order for, to attract the attention of my investors or bankers and in order to get, to get the loan uh, accepted, the loan proposal accepted. Okay? OK, now how can I finance my venture? There are so many ways uh, to uh, finance my company. First of all, I might, be, my, I might be a millionaire, hopefully, and I will use my personal money in order to finance my uh, venture. I might take a bank loan. I might uh, ask some investors to invest their money in uh, my business company, in my business venture, or I might be using incubators and accelerators to uh, get some financial assistance. What are these incubators and accelerators? Okay, accelerators, uh, they accelerate growth of an existing company, while incubators, they incubate disruptive ideas with the hope of building out a business model and company. Incubators are often more focused on innovation. Okay, so these accelerators and incubators, accelerators, they help, uh, they, they help uh, the growth of, of already existing companies, while incubators uh, try to help uh, business ideas to reach, uh, to be established and to be more successful. These incubators and accelerators, they can be helping uh, the entrepreneur uh, financially, uh, they can help. They can help uh, the entrepreneurs also how to uh, operate the business, how to structure his business, how uh, to uh, to uh, arrange all the necessary resources in order to establish his or her business. So some uh, some entrepreneurs go through these accelerators and incubators in order to uh, be uh, able to uh, get financial assistance and any kind of assistance also of, uh, regarding operations, regarding uh, maybe marketing, regarding human resources assistance, they can uh, be uh, provided through these accelerators and incubators as well. Now let's move to the last section, which is entrepreneurship in Saudi Arabia. We all know that entrepreneurship in Saudi Arabia is uh, a very important uh, uh, phenomenon. So many uh, companies are uh, popping out on a daily basis. The, co uh, the government in Saudi Arabia, they are encouraging these initiatives th through uh, the uh, small and medium enterprises, a general authority, which is Monshaat. They are supporting these SMEs to uh, get uh, enough uh, financial resources and any other uh, kind of resources also in order to establish uh, or to assist these SMEs. Because as we all know, these SMEs SMEs will be also uh, contributing to the economy of our country. They will uh, be generating profits. They will be also be creating uh, new business opportunities for the unemployed uh, people. So the government agencies in Saudi Arabia and in any country all over the world, they try to assist these SMEs because they contribute positively to the economy. Okay, so this is regarding Munshaat. We also have a uh, MISC growth accelerator. We have Astrolabs, Hikma, uh, Bader, Flat Six Labs, and uh, ten, uh, nine uh, ten, over tenth. Uh, also, uh, these are accelerators and uh, incubators that are assisting uh, entrepreneurs and SMEs in Saudi Arabia. Uh, nowadays, and we have so many more, but I uh, only collected uh, these uh, as an example. To conclude, entrepreneurship, it is not a genetic trait. It is a skill that most people can learn. So don't say that you cannot be an entrepreneur. Anybody can be an entrepreneur, regardless of age, race, gender, or national origin, we all can be entrepreneurs, okay? Although many people come up with great business ideas, most never act on their ideas. Entrepreneurs do. 
now it's time for you to make a difference. Uh, thank you very much for attending this session. I hope you really enjoyed uh, my session. And uh, now I will uh, leave the floor for any question. One minute, please. OK, do you have any questions regarding uh, today's lecture? No. no thank, thank you, Dr. Turner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Teacher, Thank you. Doctor, can you share us the presentation? Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very, very, very much. Okay, no, I did kill him. Yes, I will. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Yes, yes. Thank I'll you so much. The Can we have the slide? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, Doctor, uh, uh, when, when the certificate will be available. Sorry? How we can take the certificate? will be available. Uh, sorry, I cannot hear you well. Yes, he's asking. Yes, he's asking. Okay, I will try to Please talk one by one. Can I make a cast? Certificate. I'm just asking you if the certificate will be available and where we can find the certificate. Will it be delivered by the email? Uh, I will contact administration regarding the certificates. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bro, are you on the game? Sorry? Shahadat Kavan is still in her. Mom can't be in her Arab as an account. Oh, okay. Bill 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 Shahadat. أنا I need to بدي أحكي مع الإدارة بالنسبة لهذا الموضوع أوكي بعتقد بيبعثوا لكم إياهم باي إيميل يعني دكتور باي ديفولت كان يبعث بالإيميل ولا يبعث بالإيميل؟ ويبعث بالإيميل أو بالإيميل؟ أنا أرسل الصورة باي إيميل شكراً لكم شكراً لكم uh, 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 no. uh, 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 Doctor, would you like to mention our names? To mention our names in the chat to to for the certificate. Your names in the chat as well. Uh, excuse me. Doctor, from the side of the names, you can tell me from the way you can tell me from the same Windows team. Yes, yes, I know. Can you please, uh, can you please also mention my name? Okay. Uh, I write my name in chat. لا لا ما يحتاج هي عندها شيء تقولي يعني ما يحتاج تكتبوا سميكم. دكتور how can I sign? Thank you very much. Uh, سؤال. A customer. Yes sure. Uh, I think they will send it to you by email. Okay. Miss, do we have to give some evidence that we were part of the lecture uh, or would they uh, not? I can send, uh, send you uh, your email. My email? 
what's the name? Uh, what's the email? The, the administration will send you the email. Don't worry. Doctor, how can I style the birds to this uh, customer? How can you what? I styled that uh, Mercedes is a customer. Sorry, I cannot hear you well. How how can I style the Mercedes a customer? Can, can you write in chat? I cannot hear you. I'm sorry. How can I style uh, that Mercedes a customer? Yeah, there's no big deal. Keep it on as a buy-in be your business idea. Yeah. Okay. Is a business idea to buy talk? It's very attractive. You studied it well. You know that the business idea will be uh, of high quality. Uh, the customers will be uh, willing to buy your products or services because uh, your products value. It means uh, that uh, you don't need to convince the customers to buy your products. They will buy it uh, directly. If you have high quality products or services, well studied prices, you are using uh, well communication uh, uh, channels to reach the customers, the customers will love your products or services. Okay, thank you. So you mean that when, when the product over value, then the Customers was willing to uh, to buy to buy it. Yes, if you have high value product, the customers will want to buy it. Excuse me, can we leave? Are you finished? Yes, yes, you can leave. Yes, yes, Thank we're you. done. If you don't have any question, you may leave. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Doctor. You're welcome. Thank Thank you, doctor. You're welcome. Hope you enjoyed the session. We did, thank you. Um, how you will know me? I don't put my welcome in jam. Don't, don't worry, I don't. I downloaded the list of uh, attendants. Don't worry, you may leave. Miss, I got disconnected by the end of by itself. So does that mean that my name didn't come in the attendance list? No, no, it will appear. Don't worry. Okay, thank you. Can we leave? Yes, yes, you may leave. Thank you, Doctor. I think I'm happy. Thank you. I'm on. Excuse me, Miss. Yes. Is it okay? I think this is lecture, but I'm from another university. Is it okay if what? If I attend this this lecture, but I'm from another university. You're more than welcome. To <laughs> miss. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. You're, you're welcome. But, Doctor, uh, there's uh, four questions. Uh, 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 what's the recommended uh, uh, business uh, that uh, that easily can start? It, uh, it depends on the market. It depends on your passion. What, what kind of industry you will uh, like to operate in? Uh, you need to study the market. As we have mentioned before, you need to study your business idea. Okay, we cannot say that there is one business that is good for everybody. It depends on your personality. It, it depends on the country you're living in. Okay, so you need to study the market. You need to make a feasibility study in order to make sure that this business idea is good for you as well. Uh, yes. uh, I will try to send it today. Okay. Okay, thank you. Sorry? Sorry, I cannot hear you. Please, 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 I طيب عفوا يا دكتور انا اسف على الازعاج آه السلادات وصلنا معها الشهادات الحضوريه في الايميل صحيح؟ ان شاء الله ان شاء الله يعطيك العافيه شكرا لك يا دكتور الله يعافيك يمكننا نخرج الان خلاص؟ دكتور اي جست ونا نو وات كان بي بنفيت ذا سيرتيفيكيت يو كان اد تو يور سي في It will be support uh, as uh, administration. 
it, uh, your CV. It is a good uh, for it is good for your CV. If if my specialty is uh, administ uh, has business administration, uh, yes, it's uh, good. Yes, you definitely need to uh, know about entrepreneurship if you're specialized in business administration. Excuse will, me. How will be prepared to the company? Will what? Will will be prepared prepared to the company? Which company? Like uh, any com uh, any company that we that we are working on will be prepared uh, prepared to be submit. Uh, if you if you mean uh, for your CV, it will support your CV. It's not the main certificate that you're getting. Your university certificate is much more important than this certificate. But it is a good uh, it is good to attend uh, such webinars and seminars uh, during your studies because it will uh, improve and add to your knowledge. Mm -hmm. So it has not uh, it's not recommended to be submit. Uh, Submitted uh, in, uh, in in the company and the company that, that I'm working on. It you can you can use it you can use it if you are already employed. employed. أنت أوردي موظف وحابب تخبر صاحب العمل إنه أنت حضرت هيك وبينار related لل entrepreneurship فيك تقدم له لشهادة كمان. Because I think that will be increased. But, uh, the baggage salary. I think uh, I I know no, the, uh, the, uh, it will not affect your salary. No, but it is good to have uh, such uh, certificates or such. Uh, okay, well, uh, I don't mean the. I mean the. Like uh, I mean the evaluation. Uh, yes, maybe it will affect them slightly. The evaluation, not much. Yeah. That that I mean. That's what I mean. Yes, maybe, hopefully. Doctor? Yes. Um, and I asked me, the Dakhla is me, but small is Okay, thank you very much for that, and and goodbye. You're welcome. Yes, how can um, I help you? Uh, أنا دخلت باسمي بس مو الاسم الكامل عادي ولا كيف راح تقدر تاخدي عشان هذا؟ شو اسمك؟ لوجين بس مكتوب لوجين مع الرقم الجامعي بس مو كاتب الاسم الكامل. Okay, is a free at Michael Jam. I'm more than enough. Oh, okay. uh, doctor. Yes. Ah, uh, I'm the same thing. Just the name and the child. Who is the child? Yes, I'm the same. Yes, I think it's enough as well. Okay, we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Yes, yes, we're done. Okay. Doctor, but how much can you send the certificate to the MS? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. بس hopefully soon. ممكن تاخذ وقت. دكتورة. يس. أنا اسمي بس موجود واسم الوالد يعني ما حطيت الرقم الجامعي. أوكي أي ثينك إتس إناف. أوكي ثينك يو. دكتورة هلا عم تاخذ دكتورة. هلا تحضير. نسمح هلا شو؟ نعم. أنا هلا اسمي العائلة. The attendance already is on the list. I downloaded it from Microsoft Teams. Not I'm taking the attendance. Don't worry. Doctor, regarding the this lecture you 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 recorded, where we can find it if we need to back to. Okay, unfortunately.